The British Midland Ulster Rally and first away from the start line in Belfast, last year's winner, Englishman Russell Brooks. But watching closely, rival Jimmy McRae. Well, I don't know about the best chance. There's still an awful lot of quick people around. But uh, the car's good and we've got a softer compound tyre than we had in the circuit of Ireland, so hopefully we'll be right. No problems with the engine this time? No, the engine's good. We, we did a, an event in the Canaries and uh, we had absolutely no problems at all, so I hope that that's going to continue. McRae full of confidence in his new four-wheel drive MG Metro 6R4. And from his success in the Scottish Rally two months before, Finn Michael Sundstrom. And hoping for a win, Mark Lovell. Well, we've got to go hard right from the word go. So we should be trying to get right up on the pace straight away. Well, would you be hoping that David and Jimmy drop out and then... No, oh, I hope we beat them. I don't want anything to happen to them, but obviously it would make our life a lot easier if they did drop out. Yeah. So what's your main aim in this event then? To win it. So on its second appearance in Ireland, the Group B four-wheel drive Ford RS200, but right behind it was the powerful Metro of Welshman David Llewellyn. It is a very much a sprint event, so uh, just sort of bed ourselves into the first stage and see what the pace is like, really. Yeah, and just take it from there. Take it from there, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that the pace is going to be very, very quick. Uh, with the top five, all need to win this rally for chop, uh, championship wise, so um, it, it's going to be very, very quick. The teams lined up for the start of the special stages, starting west of the city and heading north to the coast. But what was on the minds of most of the competitors was how the new regulations imposed by the sports governing body FISA would affect the event. The special stages were restricted to no more than 75 miles an hour to try to avoid a repeat of recent accidents on international rallies. By the early stages, Russell Brooks was keeping his conventional rear-wheel drive Opel Manta in third place and clocking fastest time on some. And he kept up with the supercars too, beating the bogey time on almost every stage, so that by the ninth stage he was lying equal fourth. McRae too was falling foul of the change in regulations, sharing fastest time with the other leaders but he managed to break away so that by stage nine he was leading, if only by two seconds. Five seconds behind, Michael Sundstrom. Followed by Mark Lovell's Ford. David Llewellyn was going well, just two seconds behind McRae. Getting the most out of his Opel Manta, leading Irishman Austin McHale, competing for valuable points in the Irish Tarmac Championship. He gave a startling performance in spite of having recently left hospital after a kidney operation. Penty Auricola had problems right from the start with his gear selector and these continued right through the event but he was still the fastest Group A car. The all-woman crew of Louise Aiken-Walker and Ellen Morgan started well staying in the top ten, and their good fortune was to continue throughout the event. Andrew Wood had less luck, losing time to change a heater hose even before the start of the first stage in his Vauxhall Astra.
Harry Toivonen was well amongst the leaders in the early stages and giving his customary surprising performance in the Skoda, John Hoglund. Completing the lineup of Metro's, Cyril Bolton. Making the World International Rally debut of the new Ford Sierra RS Cosworth, Ken McKinstry. A short appearance though, he seriously damaged the car on stage 21. So as the leaders battled it out together at the front of the field, the lower numbers fought to make their way there. But even away from the top international drivers, the later runners gave some impressive performances. How you get on, Jim? Yeah, uh, all right. Just Big problem with the new phase of ruling. They're out of the six stages we've done. We've cleaned five of them by about 60 or seconds. So, I mean, everybody's in the same position as they were after the first stage. The average speed is set at 75 miles an hour, and we've been breaking that five out of the six stages. So, you, uh, hypothetically, you've got four winners here. At the moment, there are uh, three of us leading. Uh, myself, David Llewellyn and uh, Michael Sunstrom. <laughs> After six stages. <laughs> David Llewellyn was also intrigued by the FISA ruling and how the winner would eventually be declared. <laughs> that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Michael reckons that uh, if it's a tie at the end that he'll win because he's got the smallest engine, but... Uh, I don't know if I totally agree with that. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have some stages soon that uh, that'll give us... Uh, sort all the problems out. Yeah, yeah, sort the job out. It's going to be pretty tight anyway. I think that's that's already been proved. Because like, even though you know we know what, what times we've been doing, mm -hmm. and we're all within a couple of seconds of each other anyway, so, so it's going to be close. If you hadn't been cleaning the stages, who would have been leading the rally just now? Uh, Jimmy, I think. Jimmy with us a couple of seconds behind him. Mm. And Michael about two seconds behind us, it would still been very close. So yeah. perhaps it isn't so unfair anyway, you know. Cause it, Long uh, way to go yet, though. Do I? Mean, yes. So, so hopefully it'll, it'll sort itself out. When the dark comes, everybody will go a bit slower. 
relaxing after his efforts, Penty Auricola was pleased with his progress after his earlier difficulties. You enjoying yourself? Yep. So how are you getting on? Oh, yeah, the first three stages we had some problems with um, gear selector. Maybe I've been playing tennis too much, so I was I tell the abusing the gear box. Shut up. But um, the mechanics fixed it in the last service, in the last three stages, no problem at all. So I'm yeah, happy. Having to cope with a right-hand drive car, Harry Toivonen was looking forward to a left-hand drive Metro. I have driven all my life with the left-hand drive, and suddenly you must change. It's completely different. You know, you can't see the left side, where is it going, and you take too many shortcuts. <laughs> and so, sometimes there is, you know, some small stone, and that's always bad news. But uh, now I'm happy. I heard it in the morning that I will get... Uh, I knew that I will get left hand drive for a thousand legs, but I heard that uh, also for Manx. At the end of the first night, McRae was still leading as the rally headed back to Belfast for regrouping. <laughs> Michael Sundstrom's Peugeot couldn't quite catch the Scotsman and he arrived back in Belfast in fourth place. David Llewellyn was doing well to stay up with the leader just one second behind McRae. But the following morning he was to crash out of the rally and end with nothing. <laughs> Mark Lovell wasn't going badly either, taking the Ford to third place and using all of the car's turbo power. Austin McHill had justified the decision of the organizers to seed his car in sixth place, although he did make the odd small error. <laughs> Pente Auricola continued to lead Group A and helped to clear the spectators with some impressive driving. At the Belfast halt, Harry Tyvenen was lying fifth, just 10 seconds behind the leader as he arrived in Belfast. <laughs> Spectators warned Tyvenen about a tractor which had been parked on the stage and others took a more direct approach to warn the marshals about what was happening. Hey! Can we stop them? No, it's not most put the tractor across no. the bleeding room. No. Put no. down the top. Send me up to you. Watch yourself. Oh, John Hogland took the corner at a steady pace. Cyril Bolton was obviously feeling the strain. And Andrew Wood had a less than successful attempt at the bend. Saturday morning and McRae sets off through the Irish countryside with determination to keep up the pace and take the event which he has led almost all the way.
The final run to the finish back in Belfast and after a trouble-free event, Jimmy McRae was all set to win by more than a minute. Mark Lovell suffered from the usual gearbox problems which have plagued the car, but he still managed second place in spite of this being the first pace notes rally with his co-driver. Three minutes behind McRae, but still capturing third overall, Michael Sundstrom, delighted with his performance after an early setback. Russell Brooks finished fifth, slowed towards the end by oil in the clutch, but still a good result for a two-wheel drive car. After a season of retirements and coping with right-hand drive, Harry Toivonen in an excellent fourth place. And a spirited drive gave Austin McHale sixth place and maximum points in the STP Tarmac Championship. The ladies' prize went to Louise Aiken Walker and Ellen Morgan in their Nissan 240RS after their seventh place. And repeating his success in the Circuit of Ireland, ninth overall for 19 year old Stephen Finlay. A series of problems failed to stop David Metcalf from winning Group A in his Vauxhall Astra GTE. On home territory, Robin Lyons took 12th place. While Pentia Ricola failed to recapture lost time early on and finished 13th overall and 2nd in Group A. Heading to the finish, some of the drivers were still really flying, determined to get the best result possible. But Andrew Wood still had the gearbox problems which had troubled him all the way through and left him 25th overall. But the event belonged to the other Scotsman, Jimmy McRae. It wasn't the first time he'd won the event, but it was the first time he'd taken the Metro onto the finishing ramp. And no one was more pleased than he was.